Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Harlequin Cast. I have been searching long and hard for the game of the century, and at long last, I have found it. I have found it, and I'm going to share it with you today. This game dates all the way back to 1956 in New York City and features international master Donald Byrne versus the then 13-year-old Bobby Fischer, and I hope you all will join me today in appreciating just the utter genius behind this game, the game of the century. You all know this map. We have a standard one versus one sort of affair here today. On the southern side, controlling the white pieces, we have Mr. Donald Byrne, International Master. And on the northern side of the map, controlling the black pieces today, we have the young 13-year-old Bobby Fisher. Let's go ahead and get this game started. Opening up with a knight to f3, it looks like Donald Byrne just kind of going for some simple development here. Uh, this is really a non-committal build order. Uh, most other players would kind of open up, moving a pawn out here to e4, maybe d4, something along those lines. Uh, but it looks like uh, Donald Byrne, again, he's an international master, doesn't want to commit himself to any particular build order, just kind of sit back uh, and see exactly what it is that Fisher is going to be doing here. And Fisher, yes, is going to respond exactly in time with the mirror move, moving his knight out to f6 here. Uh, again, just kind of challenging him uh, and doing the exact same thing uh, more or less and we'll see here that burn is just going to go ahead and develop his central control very nicely moving his pawn on up to c3 now you can see uh this pawn has got some great cover here in the middle and uh it's just going to kind of allow for a more classical development of his pieces here bobby fisher moving his pawn out to g6 it looks like he's going to be setting himself up for some sort of hyper modern defense perhaps uh you can see he's leaving himself a little bit of room for a fianchetto bishop should he decide to do that and uh, it looks like donald burn once again developing his simple pieces moving the knight out to c3 uh, he's already got two knights out. He's got plenty of room to move his pawns towards the center uh, and just kind of moving right along here with development. And Bobby Fischer, yes, exactly as we talked about before. Uh, it looks like he's going to be fianchettoing his bishop. This obviously frees up a lot of back space for him uh, for a kingside castle, so should he so choose. Uh, also, this bishop here has a nice little line of fire down the diagonal nestled in here on the seventh rank. Uh, things are looking pretty good for Fischer here indeed. We'll have to see exactly what Byrne is planning on responding with. And Burn, just as we would expect it, is going to be moving up to the D4 position here with his pawn. Uh, again, just grabbing up central control. He obviously realizes that Fisher is just kind of laying back on the beat. He's going to take advantage uh, of all of this early game uh, development as he can. And Fisher, yes, is going to respond in turn with a castle. Uh, that is definitely looking good for Fisher. He has a nice, strong uh, defensive position here. Uh, this is a hyper modern defense. Uh, in that kind of a defense, I would imagine that Fisher is going to be trying to control the center of the board more using his. His minor pieces uh, and for the most part ignoring his pawn line just as you can see him doing and for the meantime just kind of uh, giving way uh, to Donald Byrne he's playing very passively uh, just letting Byrne control the center here so uh, Byrne obviously is just going to move up and uh, just kind of extend his pawn line to the center and no oh we see a little bit of a change here it looks like Byrne is just going to uh, he's totally ignoring the King's Indian defense which would be the standard uh, moving the pawn up to the E4 position and instead moving his bishop all the way out to the F4 position here I would imagine that Byrne uh, perhaps Perhaps he understands he, he's not uh, he's not at all trying to underestimate Bobby Fisher. Even though Bobby Fisher is 13 years old, uh, it looks like Byrne understands uh, that Fisher has a really really solid understanding of opening game moves here, uh, and is instead perhaps trying to get Fisher a little bit outside of his comfort zone uh, by opting for this opening bishop move here instead of going for the standard King's India defense. Uh, we'll have to see exactly uh, if this throws Fisher off of his game or not. And we have a pawn to d5 by Bobby Fischer. This is the Grunfeld defense. Uh, Fischer is continually putting pressure on Donald Byrne, uh, just making sure that he knows what he's doing as well. And we can see Donald Byrne, oh, getting really clever now. Of course, obviously incited by the fact that Bobby Fischer is just challenging him so well. We can see here a little bit of the Russian system line of attack here, uh, moving the queen all the way out to b3 there, uh, not leaving Bobby Fischer with too many good moves. Uh, and yes, Bobby Fischer is just going to go ahead and go for the trade here, moving his pawn all the way 
in, capping uh, capping one of Donald Burns' pawns, and putting a little bit of pressure on Donald Burns' queen here. Uh, this is a pretty nice move by Fisher because it just buys him a little bit of tempo uh, and forces Burns to move his queen a second time. And yes, he does. Uh, the queen moves up, capturing at the C4 spot, grabbing that pawn. Uh, and now the tempo is back to Bobby now uh, as he's going to decide his next move. And it looks like there he goes, moving his pawn out uh, to the C6 position here. Uh, this is a pretty nice move. This is uh, along the lines of the Grunfield defense. I'd imagine that if he's moving like that, we're going to be seeing at some point in this game uh, Knight moving out to the D7 position, uh, which is a not too uncommon move for the Grunfeld defense uh, whatsoever here. And here we have it. Uh, once again, uh, Burns just going to go back to his standard development position position here, moving his pawn all the way out to E4. Uh, this, of course, opens up a whole bunch of stuff on his side of the battlefield. Uh, this opens up... Uh, his white bishop can get out there. He's got a nice line of fire, eventually making way for a castling. Uh, and as you can see here, all of his minor pieces, including queen, have already been developed uh, with the exception of this one bishop here. Uh, pretty soon, he'll be able to connect up his rooks. Really, really solid mid-game here. Uh, really solid development going for Burn right now. And it looks like we have a knight to d7 for Bobby Fischer, just like we were saying along the Grunfeld line there. I'm uh, going to go ahead and move that knight out. And now, we, oh, here we have a nice little rook move coming out of Donald Byrne, moving his artillery all the way up to the d file, putting a lot of pressure here. Uh, he knows because of that earlier exchange of pawns, uh, Fischer's d file is a little bit weak here. He does not have a pawn in this row, moving the rook there. Nice, strong, centralizing, uh, stabilizing position there. Uh, we'll have to see exactly. Oh, Bobby Fischer getting a little bit creative here. Now, normally I'd say uh, it's a bad idea idea to go ahead and move your minor pieces more than once during your development, uh, but as you can see, Bobby Fischer has a ferocious attack, moving his knight out to the b6 position here, attacking the queen. This is obviously going to force Donald Byrne to retreat his queen, uh, moving back to the b3 position or something like that in order to get out of harm's way, and that'll end up being a free move there for uh, Bobby Fischer. And no, no, we see Donald Byrne is just going to go ahead, continue to be aggressive, moving his queen all the way up to the c5 position, uh, keeping it out there, but unfortunately, I mean, obviously he can't attack the knight. The knight is too well defended, and unfortunately, this aggressive stance here, he is hanging out in this nice little outpost in front of the pawn, uh, but he doesn't have any real attacks of any significance out there. And Bobby Fischer, Bobby Fischer with the stunning counterattack, realizing that he has an opportunity here since Donald Burns' last move didn't have too much punch behind it. Uh, you can see he's moving his bishop all the way out to the g4 position right now, and he stabs out with a wonderful looking pin on the knight right now, pinning this knight directly to the bishop. Uh, if this knight moves at all, he's threatening to capture the bishop. Uh, stuff is looking pretty good for Bobby Fischer here. We'll have to see. It uh, looks like Donald Bur Donald Byrne in a very, very questionable move decides to just move ahead with his bishop right now, uh, perhaps equally threatening a trade here or something along those lines. Uh, but that's got to be a blunder. I'm not exactly sure why he'd do that, uh, most notably because we already saw him move his bishop all the way out to the F4 position. And... Um, it's a bad idea to move your to move your opening op opening pieces twice there. There's no real reason for it. You can see he really, really needs to be moving uh, his white bishop out right now. That's the last minor piece he hasn't developed. And unfortunately, he's avoiding doing that right now, uh, preventing a castle or any anything like that. Perhaps being a little bit too aggressive here. And uh, Bobby Fischer obviously thinking long and hard about what he can possibly do to take advantage of that blunder. And we see and we see an outstanding move right now. Bobby Fischer moving his knight all the way up to the A4 position. This is a wild move. This is, Bobby Fischer is a crazy, insane maniac. There is no reason for him to be doing this. Knights on the rim are dim. This is a saying in chess. You never want to have your knights on these positions here. You virtually cut out half of your moves. Uh, this knight is l isolated out here. Uh, he's, he's basically, yeah, there's a little fork here between the queen uh, and and the knight here, but Bobby Fischer, his knight is completely unsupported right now. Uh, there's nothing whatsoever preventing Donald Byrne from just capturing Bobby Fischer's knight. What on earth is Bobby Fischer thinking? Obviously, Donald Byrne is a grand master here. Uh, sorry, he's an international master, and he's just going to be thinking long and hard about this offering here, because uh, he's just basically sacrificing a knight for no reason. Donald Byrne thinking to himself long and hard, wondering, well, of course I want to take that. That's a free piece, but why? Why is Bobby Fischer distracting me away from the center? So, uh, what is this... What is what is my knight? My knight is defending the e4 pawn. Aha! That is it. Bobby Fischer, as you can see, is poised for an attack on the e4 pawn. The e4 pawn is incredibly weak right now for uh, Donald Byrne. Uh, it is only being defended right now by this knight. Uh, perhaps Donald Byrne realizes uh, that Bobby Fischer has a long, deeply complicated plan that involves removing the defender from this pawn uh, and furthering his position on the board. So it looks like Donald Byrne has made up his mind. He is, in fact, going to be moving the queen all the way back to the a3 position, not being baited out by 
by Bobby Fischer. Uh, he does not want to go ahead and just take the free sacrifice. Instead, uh, it looks like he is offering an exchange of knights now since uh, it's going to go back to Bobby. And Bobby, yes, is going to go ahead and take him up on that offer right now, moving out with his knight, uh, taking control of that position on the board right now, capturing the knights, uh, and going to go ahead and get this exchange started. Now, Donald Byrne here has to consider exactly how he wants to capture this knight. Obviously, it's his knight here. He does have the queen and he has the pawn. Um, but it looks like, it looks like yes, he's going to go ahead and capture it with the pawn. Obviously, uh, in that situation there, he realizes that he has a nice crossfire uh, towards the center uh, between his queen and his bishop up here to this, uh, to this very, very key position here on the e7 pawn. Uh, he doesn't want to move his queen out of position there and therefore is opting instead to take it uh, with his pawn right now. And we'll see Bobby Fischer now is commencing his attack on the center, moving in with his knight. 2e4, gobbling up that little pawn right there. And, uh, oh, we have a nice counterattack coming out of Donald Byrne as well, responding in kind, uh, not wanting to give up any free material or anything like that. Uh, Bobby Fischer being threatened a bit there, not wanting, obviously, to capture that because of the fact uh, that Donald Byrne's bishop there is being defended by his queen, so... 